Tonight on the Muskie Daily, why students will still be studying in the library in Cambridge Hall. New Muskies are welcome to the campus with plenty of fun. And the men's soccer team kicks off its fall season tonight at McConaughey Stadium. Good evening and thanks for tuning in. I'm Carissa Kent. And I'm Mary Beth Hotel. Topping our news today, before classes began, first year students had the chance to get to know one another through a variety of games and activities. Or Media's Christine Holmes has more on the Welcome Week in 2015. The class of 2019 is welcome to Muskingum University with a weekend full of activities before hitting the books. The freshest faces on campus had plenty to do during Welcome Weekend from Friday through Sunday. Muskies could tie-dye t-shirts, play kickball on the East Lawn, and even participate in a game of water polo in the campus lake. The pink team currently has both of the balls. Students kick and splash in their inner tubes. The goal? Getting an inflatable volleyball past the goalkeeper and inside the floating net. They're having a lot of fun. Um, it was a little bit difficult to try to get them into the lake originally, but now that there are people in the lake, more people are just showing up to get there to, to cool off and, and have some fun. By night, freshmen could still be seen playing, this time inside bubbles. Got to go around them, spread out a little bit, kick the ball, not everywhere like they were. <laughs> the new Muskies bounce around on the turf at McConaughey Stadium in a game of bubble soccer. I got completely bowled over by God knows who, and it was so much fun. But by Sunday night, all the weekend fun and games came to an end for the start of classes on Monday. For Orbit Media News, I'm Christine Holmes. The first year students received a more formal welcome earlier today during opening convocation. The class of 2019 faculty, staff were all in attendance during today's opening convocation ceremony. Addressing the crowd today was James Purdy, a 1985 graduate of Muskingum University. As an undergraduate, Purdy majored in history and business. He is now a trust and a state lawyer in New York City. His message for the students and faculty in attendance was to take failures and learn from them in order to be successful. Also during today's convocation, three professors received faculty awards for their work. Lisa Marshall, Associate Professor of Communication, was awarded the William Oxley Thompson Award for Excellence in Teaching. Richard Arnold, Associate Professor of Political Science, was awarded the William Rainey Harper Award for Outstanding Scholarship. And Paul Zule was awarded the Cora I. Orr Faculty Service Award. Muskingum students will have to wait another semester to use the new library after a delay sets back the grand opening. The Roberta A. Smith Library was expected to open in time for the fall 2015 semester, but when vendors could not meet the expected deadlines, the opening had to be pushed back. President Steele told faculty during the state and of the university address that the library will now open in January. The Muskingum University Marching Band has undergone some changes for the 2015 fall semester. One of the biggest changes is the addition of the Color Guard. Color Guard adds to the marching band's show with visual interest. The Guard has to multitask with marching, spinning, tossing a flag, and dancing. Sophomore Sarah Watson joined for the fun. It would be a different experience, so I thought it would be fun. <laughs> This is a new adventure for Watson, for she has a background in baton and dance. Now her experiences will include flag silks. Watson is mostly looking forward to learning the flag techniques and getting to know the others involved. So I thought it would be fun. Furry friends stay cool during the dog days of summer by jumping in the new Concord area pool. The fifth annual Dog Days at the Pool event was hosted by Incard over the weekend. In-card program director Judy Beatum says that the event is an end of the summer celebration.
the last couple of days that we're open, we have the dogs come up and play and socialize and, and just run all over. Um, they have a great time. It's so much fun to watch, as you can see. The event raises money to support the pool. There is a $5 fee per dog. Beatum says dog days at the pool typically draw in around $75 each year. Coming up next on the Muskie Daily, the news videographer shot dead last week is laid to rest, and President Obama makes a stop in Alaska. This is Will Mullins, and I want to encourage you to watch Chapel on Orbit TV, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Thanks. decisions are being made at Student Senate that could affect your campus organization by tuning into Orbit TV on Tuesdays at 11 in the evening and again on Wednesday through Sunday at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. Officials at the Central Ohio College say a student missing since Sunday has been found dead. There's no evidence of the crime. Denison University says it says in a statement that Wendell Jackson's body was found at 80, about 8.40 this morning. It was found in a nature preserve near the campus in Granville, about 30 miles east of Columbus. An autopsy is planned. At Kentucky's Murray State University is proving that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. She's the first student at the university with Down syndrome to be accepted into a sorority. Amanda Roberts reports. Have you seen her new music oh, video? Awesome. Parents dream their children are successful, happy, yeah. and loved. Yeah. <laughs> Although sometimes seeing them lunch with a loving group is all that's needed to see those dreams come to reality. They call her the girl that's changing Greek life here at Murray. Alexis Kane is the first female student at Murray State accepted into Greek life with Down syndrome. What the thought? Wow, wouldn't it be nice to be in Hawaii? Of the more than 250 girls who started the week, Alexis was one of 233 who accepted a bid. I think it's great that she is helping to bring all of this to light. Initially nervous about her daughter going Greek, her mom, Cami, says all those nerves disappeared when she saw Alexis with her second family. It was heartwarming, you know, it's, it's something you wish that every every student with a disability or a handicap could experience. Alexis and I are going to run as a team. We are like a family. We are. A family that's helped Alexis come into her own light and challenge norms and stigmas across the country. <laughs> the outward appearance and the brand of a sorority isn't what matters. It's like the values that you hold true. I love my sister here. But her love and infectious personality stayed closer to home. I can confidently say she's changed me and I know she's changed a lot of other girls on our campus too. Friends, family, and colleagues gathered to remember a WDBJ photojournalist shot and killed last week. A celebration of life service was held this morning in Roanoke for Adam Ward. He and reporter Allison Parker were gunned down last Wednesday during a live TV interview. The shooter, a former reporter for WDBJ, later killed himself. A private memorial service is planned for Parker. President Barack Obama doing reality TV. Obama is spending day two of his three-day Alaska trip hiking Exit Glacier. Exit Glacier has been receding for decades. Then Obama will put his survival skills to the test while taping an episode of the NBC reality TV show Running Wild with Bear Grylls. Obama is in Alaska to call attention to global warming and what is happening to the planet. It is monsoon season in Phoenix, Arizona. There are stranded motorists, widespread car crashes, and reports of downed power lines and fires. Fire officials in Phoenix say they received more than 400 emergency calls last night. Monsoon storms hit the area, knocking out power to several thousand customers and causing flash flooding. The storms begin moving through the area around sundown with high winds, lightning, and heavy rain. That's it for state and national news. Stay tuned after the break for your weather update and a look at this week's In Muskie Sports action. 
This is Will Mullins, and I want to encourage you to watch Chapel on Orbit TV Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Thanks. Find out what decisions are being made at Student Senate that could affect your campus organization by tuning into Orbit TV on Tuesdays at 11 in the evening and again on Wednesday through Sunday at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. and humid with a low of around 64 degrees. Tomorrow is looking to be partly sunny and when unseasonably warm. The high is 88. Tomorrow night will be a warm 66 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Thursday, partly cloudy, unseasonably warm with humid high of 87. Thursday night, mostly clear, warm with low of 65. That's all for the weather. Next up is your Husky Sports. I'm Andrew Dunlap with your Fighting Muskie Sports News. The men's soccer team will be starting the season off tonight against Car Carnegie Mellon. The Muskies will be looking at the 9 to 30 starters to make the most of this season. Leadership in senior Gret Hanna and juniors Antonio Mihan, Zach Schmach, and Nick Coach will, be, will play an important role on how the team will handle adversity. Opposing teams will have a difficult time as well, guard, guarding sophomore Trent Newby, who led the team last year with six goals and a pair of assists. He was also awarded all OAC honorable mention. The game kicked off at 7 o'clock at McConaughey Stadium. The Muskingum University cross-country teams are in action today as they host the Muskingum Invitational here on campus. The men are expected to be led by senior Ryan Cunningham, sophomore Ryan Luton, and the first-year duo of Brady Hall and Chad Holmes. On the flip side, the ladies will be led by mostly the junior trio of Julie Fobes, Josie Baum, and Hannah Gregory. Another key contributor to the 2015 season will be senior Caroline Nagy. The Muskie football team is set to kick off their 2015 campaign on Saturday when they host Waynesburg at 1 o'clock. The offense is still under the command of senior quarterback Cody Williams this season, but also looks to get major contributions from junior running back Melvin Smith on the ground. The defense will be run by preseason All-American linebacker Channy Fulton. Fulton led the OAC with 97 tackles last season. The Muskies are coming off a 3-7 2014 season, but are looking to make great strides towards improvement this year. Saturday's game can be heard live on WMCO with live pregame starting at 12.30. That's it for sports. After this break, Carissa and Mary Beth will be back with your campus events for this week. This is Will Mullins, and I want to encourage you to watch Chapel on Orbit TV Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Thanks. Find out what decisions are being made at Student Senate that could affect your campus organization by tuning into Orbit TV on Tuesdays at 11 in the evening and again on Wednesday through Sunday at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. Here are some events happening on campus this week. Free lemonade will be available on the quad on Thursday, September 3rd. The lemonade will be provided by members of Chi Nu and Kappa Sigma during Common Hour. The women of Theta Phi Alpha, FAD, and the men of Phi Kappa Tau are hosting a cookout on Friday, September 4th. The cookout will also include a game of sand volleyball as a way to end the first week of classes. The cookout will be located at the Phi Kappa Tau Fraternity House and will begin at 5 o'clock and will last until 8 o'clock that evening. That's it for this edition of the Muskie Daily. Be sure to pick up the edition of The Black and Magenta on Friday. This week you can read about an event the kids 
as New Concord honking horns and blaring sirens. And tomorrow's edition of the Muskie Daily will give you a more extensive look into dog days at the pool. Have a good night.